Okay, so in this video, I'd like to show you a little bit more detailed information on how the wiring is actually connected on the board. Basically, probably the best way to show you is just show you the actual plans layout. Now, this is the uh, uh, Stan Myers uh, Memo 420. If you look over here, what if you'll sell Memo 420? And this is the voltage intensifier circuit. It caught my attention uh, because on it's a little different than most of the other VIC circuits uh, Stein Myers had. And the one major difference is that right at right past the variable transformer, the variac, uh, you have this full wave bridge rectifier. But right after this, I did not see a high voltage coil transformer. There is no high voltage transformer here. So that caught my attention and I said I'd like to try this out and see what's the lowest voltage um, and power that I can pulse this in and still have fracturing of the bubbles. So how is it connected? Well what I did was I connected the variac. Now this is right here. You can see it. There's the variac. Okay. Now the variac goes to a bridge rectifier. Now this full wave bridge rectifier is right here on the board. I went ahead and bypassed the triggering viral pulse uh, triggering mechanism here, which means I am limited to the unipo uh, unipolar voltage waveform frequency that is provided by my power source, which is like 60 hertz or whatnot. Probably by the time it gets rectified, I get double that. Anyways, it goes from there to the standard blocking diode and that, that is over here. It's my blocking diode. Yes, it does have an oversized heat sink. I just had it laying around but you can see the temperature. It's not that crazy. That goes over to a bifiller wrapped inductor choke. Now you can see exactly how this is wired. Very detailed. It goes to your cell. So basically, out of the board, you can see it's very simple. I have a fuse here and whatnot, and little fancy um, voltage uh, that's probably not that, all that accurate, but it's pretty close enough for what I'm doing. And it comes right out of there. This is the output of the board. It goes to the inductor choke. Now, this is about 100 wraps of number 12 white and have 100 wraps of number 12 black right on the bottom of this. It is not an air core, it is actually a ferrite core. Okay, now that goes out and these are the wires that go to the water fuel cell capacitor. I'm only testing one cell in here, this is my test cell. It actually goes up you can see the water being fractured at 3.5 volts. Now, let me show you real quick. The amps draw. Here it is. It's right under one amp, 0.61. And on the board, 0.96. Okay, so what I did was I kicked it up a notch, went to seven and a half, a little bit more than seven and a half, I went seven point seven volts. Um, you can see considerable amount of more fracturing. Now, there's an experiment I'd like to perform. Some people say, you know what, the uh, water fuel cell capacitor isn't really a capacitor due to the leakage within the cell, within the electrodes, because um, there's minerals in there. Even if it's tap water, you know, water's like a sponge and it can attract uh, and traps ambient air and um, metals and whatnot. That is true. The question is, according to the parameters that we have, we realize that we can't really achieve a perfect capacitor, but does it function as a capacitor? In other words, can it retain a charge 
even though there's small leakage within the cell. That's what I'd like to experiment with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the power off, and we're going to test to see if there's a voltage drop across the uh, plates of the capacitor. Here we go. Power's off. I'm going to actually disconnect the leads. Okay, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take meter, here we go, should be in DC, and we should have some uh, voltage, there it is, DC, and it's 1.5 volts, so it is actually holding a charge, just like a capacitor. Now, maybe you guys can help me out here, but if this isn't a capacitor, then what will cause this phenomenon? Thank you.